Fullerton, California in the 1940s. Tucked away in that sleepy town was a guy named Leo Fender, tinkering in his radio repair shop. Leo wasn't a musician, but an electronics whiz. Something was brewing in Leo's shop that would change music forever. Musicians started showing up at his door. They wanted to be heard over the horns and drums. Leo saw an opportunity to invent a solution. He was about to crank up the volume on music history. Around 1946, Leo found a kindred spirit in Doc Kaufman, a lap steel guitar player and inventor. They formed K and F Manufacturing. These guys were serious about sound. Their first amp, the K and F Model 1, was a beast. The Model 1 was a hit with musicians. But like a lot of partnerships, K and F didn't last. Leo had bigger dreams. In 1946, they parted ways, and Leo was ready to take his vision to the next level. Leo, he didn't let the split with Doc slow him down. He wasn't afraid of hard work or taking risks. He poured all his energy and know-how into his own company, the Fender Electric Instrument Company, officially founded in 1946. Now, Leo wasn't just building amplifiers anymore. He was crafting a whole ecosystem for electric guitarists. He knew that to truly revolutionize music, he needed more than just a great amp. He needed a guitar that could handle the power, an instrument designed from the ground up for amplification. That's how the iconic Fender Telecaster, originally called the Broadcaster, was born in 1950. It was a radical departure from traditional guitars with its simple design, solid body, and bright twangy sound, but Leo didn't stop there. He continued to refine his amplifiers, always pushing the boundaries of what was possible. He was never satisfied with good enough. He was driven by a passion for innovation, a desire to create the best tools for musicians to express themselves. And the world was about to take notice. Now let's talk about the Champion 600. This little amp, it was a game changer. See, back in the late 40s, most amps were big, bulky things. Not exactly practical for a starving artist lugging their gear from gig to gig. The Champion 600, it was small enough to fit in the back seat of a car, but powerful enough to cut through a crowded bar. It was a hit with beginners and seasoned pros alike. That little amp with its signature woof sound became the sound of a generation of blues and rock and roll players. It was affordable, reliable, and it packed a punch. What more could you ask for? But Leo, he wasn't done yet. He knew he could do even better. He was always experimenting, always tinkering, always looking for ways to improve his designs. He was like a mad scientist of sound, and his laboratory was about to unleash a whole new wave of sonic innovation. The 1950s, that's when things really took off for Fender. Leo's amps, housed in that distinctive tweed covering, became legendary. The Twin, the Deluxe, the Baseman, these amps weren't just tools, they were instruments unto themselves. Each one had its own personality, its own sonic fingerprint. Musicians quickly learned how to push these amps to their limits, coaxing out a range of tones that redefined what an electric guitar could sound like. The Tweed amps, they weren't just about volume, though they could certainly pump it out. They were about touch, about feel, about responding to the nuances of a player's style. Leo's engineering innovations, like the use of negative feedback loops, gave these amps a warmth and clarity that was previously unheard of. These amps weren't just for guitar players either. The Bassman, with its powerful low end and robust design, quickly found favor with bass players as well. It's no exaggeration to say that the Tweed era of Fender amps helped to shape the sound of popular music for decades to come. Leo Fender, he wasn't a musician himself, but he might as well have been a rock star. His amps, they weren't just pieces of equipment. They were tools of revolution. They gave a voice to generations of musicians, from bluesmen to rockers to country pickers. They helped to break down musical barriers, to redefine genres, to create entirely new sounds. Today, Fender amps are as ubiquitous as the electric guitar itself. Walk into any music store, any recording studio, any concert hall, and you're bound to see that iconic logo. Leo Fender may have started out as a radio repairman in a small California town, but he ended up changing the world, one amplified note at a time. And that, my friends, is the power of a dream, a soldering iron, and a whole lot of sweat and perseverance.